I rise today to speak in favor of Bill C-228. It's more than time to recognize the social injustice for future retirees. Uh, in the case of a bankruptcy of a business. Bill C-228 responds to this important concern, which is unanimously supported by parliamentarians in the other chamber. Our job in the Senate is to do, uh, to take a sober second look, and that is why, as a member of the Banking Committee, I want to share with all those who did not participate in this committee study, the thoughts of several witnesses on the bill and the reasons that justify my vote. We receive many emails regarding this bill urging us to support it quickly. Like me, you understand that this bill addresses the needs and uncertainty of thousands, if not millions, because I think that this covers 1.1 million employees in the private sector as well as other employees. But some of my testimony and submissions argue that we should not act with haste, and my comments are intended to bridge that evidence. First of all, this bill will unfortunately not solve all problems for private sector retirees and future ones. In other words, C-228 is not a panacea or a cure-all. As others who have spoken before me have pointed out, and uh, uh, I realize I'm one of the first to speak at third reading. Uh, it is designed to prevent high-profile cases like the Sears and other corporate bankruptcies that have driven pensioners and older workers who relied on their company plans for retirement into, into poverty, sometimes with cut pension cuts of over 30 percent. The means chosen by the sponsor of this project MP Gladue, whom I uh, salute and congratulate, is to amend the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act and the Companies Creditors, Creditors Arrangement Act to ensure, in case of bankruptcy, the priority of pensions. And I'm thinking of uh, Senator Mancion, who explained the legal aspects of this bill fairly well, very well, rather, last week. But protection is not guaranteed. Let's be clear. This is not pension benefit insurance, as is found elsewhere in the world. Priority for pension funds in the event of bankruptcy does not guarantee that the liquidation of the company will result in the full payment of the promised pensions. A company that sees a bankruptcy coming could act accordingly, accordingly and make special payments that will reduce the value recoverable by the pension fund. C-228 does not prevent this behavior. As pointed out in the brief of the Council on Aging of Ottawa, composed a variety of experts, and I quote, an ethical and financial problem may be created if companies approaching bankruptcy decide to deplete remaining assets by making special payments special payments to officers, directors, and shareholders. Any special or unusual payment to any of these groups should be recoverable by the pension fund if made within a specified period of time prior to filing for insolvency." End quote. And the bill does not foresee this possibility. Furthermore, furthermore, furthermore rather, this bill will only have a concrete effect in four years. This time frame is desirable for pension managers who would have liked an even longer time frame. But in the meantime, in the event of a recession or bankruptcy, bankrupt pensioners and workers will not be given priority until four years after the bill receives, receives royal assent. Four years. Secondly, the scope of C-228 affects well, it does affect many people, but it affects few people compared to the uh, scope of the problem of private sector registered pension plans. There are more than 12 million people, Canadians rather, in the private sector, and very few are covered by defined benefit pension plans. 
According to Stats Canada data, the proportion of workers who are members of a registered pension plan is steadily declining from 46.1% in 1977 to 37.1% in 2019. This proportion has remained stable in the public sector, however, at around 88%, while it is constantly decreasing in the private sector to 22.4%. So two out of 10 employees in the private sector uh, can enjoy benefiting from a registered pension plan. Furthermore, the proportion of workers participating in a defined benefit plan has decreased significantly from 34.5% in 1999 to 24.7% in 2019 in favor of defined contribution plans and hybrid plans whose coverage has increased from 0.7% to 5.5% in 20 years. Defined benefit coverage uh, like uh, the one that C228 uh, is trying to protect, has declined little in the public sector. It rose from 83% to, or dropped rather, from 83 to 80% in 2019, over 10 years, but that's not the case in the private sector. During the same period, 99 to 2019, coverage fell to 8.8%. In short, less than fewer than one worker in 10 in the se private sector has a defined benefit pension plan. And Bill C-228 aims to protect these workers and pensioners in these plans. As the Council of Aging of Ottawa submission says, and I, I quote, Canada's retirement income system was designed on the assumption that employer-sponsored pension plans would play an important role in helping middle to high income individuals maintain their standard of living in retirement. Success in achieving this goal has been modest and recent trends are disturbing." End quote. In addition, as the Canadian Federation of Pensioners Brief tells us, defined benefit plans in the private sector are almost uh, palliative in nature. They're in, rather, they're uh, in palliative care. The reality, and I quote, is that no institution collects data on single employer private defined benefit pension plans. What we do know, according to the, uh, the Canadian Fen Federation of Pensioners, Pensioners, is that based on a 2022 survey of member organization of this federation, all of our all of their members' plans are closed. Closed. This means that new members are not allowed to join. In fact, most of these plans have been closed for about 20 years. Our survey, the Federation survey, also showed that there are many more retired members than active members in these plans. For every six retirees, there is only one active, that is, employed member. That's the Canadian Federation of Pensioners. Other submissions from the Pension Fund Management Community argue that C-228 could have the effect of accelerating the demise of defined pension plans in companies. Well, we can see that the demise has uh, already taken place for the most part. They also argue that other means exist to protect these pensions. The issue of pensions is complex, in summary, and to add to the complexity, the financial stakes are enormous. And this when I saw these figures, I jumped. According to Statistics Canada in 2019, total employer and employee contributions to RPPs or registered pension plans reached $71.1 billion. That was in 2019. And the market value of all these assets from the registered pension plans exceeded $2.1 trillion. That was also in 2019. That was the value, that is the value of Canada's GDP. The, so this, these figures raise many questions. 
why rush to vote for Bill C-228 if the issues are so complex and other solutions exist? Uh, uh, briefs such as the Council of Cage, uh, such as the one from the Council on Aging of Ottawa, whose members are experts and former unionists, are taking us, uh, taking us, asking us to take our time and propose sustainable solutions. And I quote: Bill C-228 creates a real dilemma. On the one hand, surviving members of defined benefit plans will have increased, but not complete protection. Complete, but com increased but not complete protection when the employer sponsor of their defined benefit plan becomes insolvent. On the other hand, as committee members have been advised, there is reason to le believe that Bill C-228 could contribute to further reductions in defined benefit plan coverage." End quote. Colleagues, you may be wondering how this threat is really possible. The reasoning is simple. Once in place, the focus on pension benefits would increase the cost of borrowing from financial institutions as the financial, since the financial risk of not being able to recover their investment in the event of bankruptcy increases. They would no longer be the priority. If borrowing costs increase, companies will close defined benefit plans, as many are doing now, in favor of defined contribution plans that do not the, present the same constraint, constraints to lenders. For the experts at the Council of on, on Aging, parliamentarians have a difficult political choice to make. I quote, this policy choice would be difficult under any cir circumstances, but this choice is particularly difficult given that, to our knowledge, there is no analysis in the public domain that would help understand the consequences of the choice. Important bills, such as C-228, should not reach the stage of passage reached by C-228 without substa substantial analytical support in the public domain so that members of parliament and the general public can understand their consequences." End quote. To add to the difficulty of our decisions, other testimony states that C-228 could harm foreign investment as well as the restructuring of Canadian businesses. The Canadian Federation of Pensioners states in their brief, and I quote, they're, they're for the bill, the super priority is the best way to ensure fair pension protection for all Canadians. Canada has 11 different pension jurisdictions, each with different requirements, rules, and standards of application. The super priority under Bill C-228 is the best way to ensure fair and equitable protection for all defined pen benefit pensioners within the very complex framework of pension regulation in Canada." End quote. So that is the issue. The Association of Canadian Pension Management notes that Canada, and it's, I should say it's very critical of this bill, it notes that Canada is the only OECD country besides South Korea to address the issue of uh, registered pension plans in the event of corporate bankruptcy through legislation that operates through bankruptcy law. So what should be done. It should be said that Canada is very, very far behind compared to other countries. The preferred solution is a benefit insurance. Germany has this, uh, the U.S., even Ontario. We should move towards this solution. But as you understand, it's very difficult to reach given the number of jurisdictions we have here in Canada. I, for one, believe that it would be strategic to vote for this bill right now. It will force us to reflect in the coming years about this, uh, reflect on this issue and discuss it more. If we vote in favor, we will need to do 
further analyses, the issue of retirement is a serious one in Canada. We have a public regime that gives a minimum amount. That's good. But the private pension plans are far from adequate. I hope the Senate will undertake a, a comprehensive study. That's its mission and its duty. Thank you.